So you haven't heard by now, the Zero Hour mission is coming back to Destiny 2, and this is one of my favorite missions. I used to love to clear this with my clan. I used to take people's Sherpa runs to this, and again, I'm going to look forward to do that in the future. If you haven't done this, this is another reason to get into the Into Light when it comes out. This is a mission that will get you out perfect in the past, and will give you a crafted version here in the future. Once the actual mission is live, I will put a more detailed guide out, but this is actually a portion of the guide that I did back when the mission was originally out. And for those who've never played it or don't know what to expect, check this video out. It'll give you very detailed information on what to do. Some of the information is dated with some of the weapons, but overall gives you a good look and feel on how to accomplish all the jumps and all the things within the mission. So the first part of the uh, mission, again, it's the same on whether it's heroic or non-heroic. The first one, there's a room that has a, basically a bunch of ads. You'll see some captains who have arc. You'll also have some shanks that have void, and then you'll have some shanks that, that do not have either one. So again, that though you want to make sure you have weapons that allow you to take those off. In the second room, you'll have a couple things that are interesting. You'll have a lot of arc shanks that you'll need to take down. So again, I use Knit Misfit for this. You can use a variety of different weapons. There'll also be some larger solar shanks. So again, just make sure you have something with solar that can take this out, whether it's you or someone on your fire team. There are some shanks that will be kind of snipers in the top areas. You'll want to either have someone who can take those out for you as a specialty person. In other words, that's their focus. Again, a sniper or a scout rifle should work for those. Then once you're through the second room, again, make sure you get all the ads. You'll get to a, a third room, and this one is a little bit more interesting. There is going to be a fallen walker and some other things. There's a lot of snipers in this section, so what we did is we had someone that kind of concentrated on them. That was kind of the role at the beginning. There are also, again, there are void and solar shanks and servitors. So again, you'll want to make sure either you divide up amongst yourselves or you switch out weapons so you can take this out. And then there's a fallen walker, and you use sort of your standard tactics. Uh, you'll need this later for sure if, you, if you're not used to taking those on. You'll need to take, if you take their they kind of their kneecaps off will basically go to the point where it'll open them up and allow you to do extra damage against their core so that's something useful once you get past this area there's going to be a small confined area where you have some ads and a large large shank for me what we do is we that's where i use my arc strider because there's a large captain in the beginning and i clear most of those out while the other uh, teammates uh, concentrate on the shanks again it just depends on what you want to do as you get familiar with this, you'll get kind of team composition and how you're going to divide those objectives. The big thing is, as you're clearing the ads, you want to make sure people are dividing and conquering. So you can get through as with as little time as possible. Past this, there's a number of ads in an area. It's in a hallway area. And one of the things about this is that it's really easy to miss one. So you want to move fast, but at the same time, you want to make sure you clear everything because it's very frustrating to have to go all the way back to the beginning and take out whatever ad you're missing. So make sure you're paying attention to that. After this, you'll get into jumping puzzle, which I'll get to in another section. Fast forward through the jumping puzzle and Trevor and the fans and everything else, you'll get to the boss area. So within the boss battle, first you're gonna have an initial ads that are popping up all over the place. If you have a roaming super, it would be really useful here because you can clear out some of the initial ads. You don't need to take out the cannons that are on the right and left hand side. Those don't count as ads. They will still kill you, but again, it doesn't count for finishing up the, the mission itself. Be careful even when you're using a roaming super because with the number of ads, they can actually shoot you out of super if you're not careful. Once you finish this first set of ads, there'll be a servitor that'll show up that has void shields. So what you want to do is if you have the Warlock still of uh, Nova Bomb, have them go ahead and take that out, and it'll take out most of the ads, hopefully, that are with it. As you're progressing, on the right and left side, there are going to be arc shanks that show up. It's really good to have one person kind of focus on those. For me, I just use uh, Misfit for that because it has decent range, and it has a lot of ammo, so it's just very forgiving. Once you get through some of that, then you also have a servitor that shows up in the back. And that servitor, again, is the same thing. If you have a Nova Bomb or something, you can obviously take that out. Once you clear that out, you'll also have some sh hidden enemies that will show up in the middle. Be careful about those, but that will also be when the tanks drop down. So what we do is when the tanks drop down, two of us go to the back on the right and left sides, and we basically cross-shoot and take the tanks out. If you're using something like Whisper, which again, even though it doesn't infinitely give you ammo now, if you do hit your shots, you don't have to reload, so that's useful. So if I'm on the right and the right box in the back, I, I shoot the left one, and the person on the left shoots the right one. 
you finish getting those down, then there'll be a few more shanks that show up in the front and a couple ads that have arc shields. And then at that point, you're done. All you have to do at that point is take the boss out. As long as you do all that in 20 minutes, you're done and you get your outbreak perfected. Again, in a minute, we'll go over what the jumping puzzles look like. So I put the jumping puzzles here for a reason. They're different between the, the non-heroic and the heroic version of the, of the mission. So in the non-heroic version of the mission, the jumps are, are a lot simpler. After you clear the final ads, it's usually a good idea before you go down the elevator shaft to switch over to whatever boots that might help you for your jumping for a particular subclass. After you go down the elevator shaft, you will take the first path be over to the left underneath the ship. So as you jump down, you'll see a ship. You need to go underneath that ship. After that, there'll be a grate that you have to blow off on your left and then another one immediately on your right. Drop down, but again, be careful because in this area, as you drop down, there's a ledge that can break off. So as you're dropping down, just make sure you take that into account and try to be careful as you're landing. Next is the long jump. And for this, you wanna cross over to the second gondola and kind of peek over the edge. If you have a Warlock or Titan, this is gonna be a particularly easy jump. For a Hunter, it's kind of difficult because there's a platform that's underneath. So if you look, if you look from the gondola, and you look against the wall, underneath there's a platform. Again, for Titans and Warlocks, it's gonna be fairly easy. For a Hunter, you can do it, but it's more difficult. What you're gonna to wanna to do is as you're dropping, make sure you get as close to possible to that wall. And there's kind of like a, an edge in there. It's like a black line almost. If you kind of hover on that, you'll get to it. The other thing that can be useful is if you're struggling with your Hunter, have your Warlock or your Titan get ahead because when they jump down there, they can actually take a switch and they can deploy a bridge for everyone that's behind them. Again, you'll see that a couple times in these encounters. Once you finish that, proceed up and climb up a crate and you'll go into another vet. Proceed to the next area, which has a series of platforms on the wall. Near one of them, there's a vent you have to blow out and climb through. The correct one will be at the top of the area. There'll be a few decoys, so it's just something you're gonna have to Kind of figure out which one's the correct one but then you go through that one the ones that are not correct will dead end the next area is the fan area and that means instant death for a lot of folks it's one that it takes a little while to kind of get used to the key as you descend is to find the gap that is lit red on each fan area so you'll see that as you go down and it'll move so it won't always be in the same location jump through that area and then you'll get to the next fan that's below do this a few times and you'll be down to the bottom and the next area you need to go through. One key is that you can use the pipes at the bottom of each red gap to land on. And you can also use the center uh, part of the fan. And I, for instance, use my hunter. And with my hunter, I sometimes use that to help me stabilize myself one of my extra jumps. The next area will be another jumping area that have very small ledges on this side. You kind of get a theme of this uh, a mission. Practice this until you get down and there'll be a small entrance so you get to the next area. Now basically what you'll see is that for each of the small ledges, there'll be you know, like one on the right, one on the left, and then back on the right. So just, like I said, it just takes some practice to get those landings uh, correct. Once you finish, you can actually pull a lever that will let you deploy platforms and make it easier for the people behind you. Now here's the next part, Trevor. Trevor is what everyone hates and typically messes up everyone's runs, even worse than the fans. Trevor's a robot that traverses several hallways you're trying to get through towards the exit. If he catches you, you're dead. There's no chance. He will chop you up into little pieces. He will also switch paths he's going down, so be very careful. So he'll be going one way and all of a sudden, whoop, wait, he reverses and comes back towards you. So you have to be careful. As you enter the area, there'll be a map that'll show basically the path that you'll be going through. There are two switches on the left and two switches on the right. If they're activated, in other words, all four, they will disappear and they won't show up on the map in red anymore. If you get there of two people, the best thing to do is have one person go left and one person go right. Run through the two switches on either side. Pay attention to Trevor, who you can normally hear and see coming down the hallway. He has an ominous red light that comes on that you'll see from far away. Some tips I would give you this area is there's a water area with pipes between the first and second set of switches. You can use that to basically get out of Trevor's way. You can also use that to jump to the other side of the map. So if he's coming down and you wanna kind of reverse and get to the other side of the map to avoid him, that's another way you can do that. There are several strategically placed yellow cubbies that you can duck into to get away from Trevor. You'll have to kind of crouch to get into those, but those are options as well. Finally, as you're running, there will be arc walls 
that randomly show up that can trap you and make it easier for Trevor to get his nightly snack. So again, Trevor's one of those things that even when you're having a perfect run, sometimes Trevor's just got it out for you. Once all the switches are flipped, head back to the end and the door should open. Start up the elevator and you're almost there. This is also a good spot to swap out any jumping exotics because you will have some time as you're going up the up the elevator. Again, you may have had jumping exotics and maybe you want something that helps your DPS. Don't take too long, but you may have some time, but you do have some time on the way up. Another tip is don't wait for the elevators to even out with the platform above. I've done that and it starts going down. When it gets close and you feel comfortable, go ahead and jump over. The next area is a descending hole of death. Stay either in the middle or you can go to the right or left, but just make sure to pay attention to the barriers as they start on the right and then one opens on the left and hitting one will kill you. When you get to the bottom, carefully jump to slow yourself down so you don't hit the floor. Don't jump quickly, jump very slowly so you can slow down gradually. Proceed through a vent on the right and you will find a room with no apparent exit. Look for an icon like I'll show on screen and that wall will open. Go through that area to the next area, hang a hard right at the end and drop through a hole. Keep pushing through the vents and you'll eventually drop in the boss battle. Now let's talk about what's different with the jumping puzzle for Heroic. First off, when you descend down the elevator, instead of going to the left, you're gonna wanna look over for a series of vents on the right that look like an E and drop down towards the back and drop through them. You'll also need to go through another vent in the next area, not the same one you went in when you went through normal. In the following area, there'll be a series of switches that you need to flip to raise the silo doors in another room. When you are successful, silo door number three will open up. All of them will open up potentially if you hit those doors, but three is the one you're gonna need to open. What you'll do then is jump on top of the open thing for silo, jump up a few times, there'll be another area for you to get into. The switch in question for number three is a switch that's diagonal from the exit from the switch room to the area with the silos. Then again, you'll also be greeted once you get through the silo jump and get up a little bit, you'll be greeted by another jumping puzzle with small ledges on each side. And again, this is another area where you can deploy platforms to help everyone that's behind you get through the, the jumping mission. The next jumping area is probably where a lot of people get stuck. This is probably the most complicated jumping puzzle and requires very tight control. It's gonna vary greatly depending on your subclass. You'll just have to get used to the feel. There's a lot of either interesting jumps you have to make with a lot of control like on the hunter or a lot of floating with the titan or warlock basically you'll be jumping outside the city wall you'll need to jump to three pipes that are externally facing and land on them in order to proceed and it can be a little tricky again depending on your your class just make sure what you're comfortable with what type of jump uh, for a hunter i use triple jump with stompies that work pretty well once you get to the last pipe then there's going to be basically three pipes that are kind of ledges that you jump up in a row. Once you get to the top of that, then there'll be a very small ledge you jump on. So you jump on that really quickly. Then there's a little bit longer jump, but this jump is too on a ledge that'll actually break when you land on it. So what you want to do is land on that really quickly. It's a little bit below where you were currently at. And then immediately you're going to jump up high as you can to land on another kind of ledge, again, made out of pipes. The next one's really tricky for some folks it's going to be the pipes that continue but they continue around the corner so you're going to need to kind of have a leap of faith to go around the corner and land on that once you're through that you're you're getting closer but you're not quite there yet in the next area you're going to see platforms that raise up on a timer and then raise back down there's going to be a series of three of them the one that's closest to you when it's coming up to give you the most time i pretty much immediately start jumping at that point now, there's a couple options depending on your subclass. You can do, on Hunter, for instance, you can double jump and get to the next one that, again, will still be up because you're still doing it in the timer. Then there's another one that's rising up, too, that you can go to. You can also, instead of going to that second one that rises up and down, you can actually make it all the way across to the final one that's actually a solid platform. So that might be an option. just depends on what you feel comfortable with. And again, with Titan Warlocks, these jumps are probably a little simpler. Once you get past that, you'll be on an area where you have to kind of jump up again. I think it's three total times to get to another area. And then you go inside of a hole in the wall and you're back inside the tower. Once you're back inside of the tower, you're going to have another slide that's similar to what you face in normal mode. Again, when you get to the bottom, you wanna be careful about how fast you're jumping so you land really nicely and really cleanly. The other thing is you'll have things that show up on the right and left that are barriers. So as you're going down, you either wanna stay in the middle or kind of move over a little each way so you can get through that. 
Then there's a series of jumps on pipes, which are pretty self-explanatory, and you'll go into a vent on the left after that. Once you're past that, you're basically gonna run the same things you went into normal. You'll run the fans and those jumps, and you'll run the Trevor, it's basically the same. However, with additional work, you will need you will have less time because you did more jumping, so you need to really try to do these things flawlessly. I would take my time, but also be in a hurry. I know it's kind of an oxymoron, but that's what I would do. Once you get through Trevor and get close to the hole in the floor, slow down and pay attention. The tile floor you pass through in normal mode, again, this is the final area before you go down through the hole, actually has a pattern that you have to follow or you will die. So that pattern rotates every week. I'll put what they look like on the screen. Again, it depends on what the burn is, whether it's void, arc, or solar. But once you do that, the person who goes across, again, can pull a lever to make it safe for everyone behind you. And at that point, you're at the boss. Same thing, possibly with reduced time, but that's why the heroic is more difficult. Once you complete heroic, you will get the catalyst. To finish the catalyst, you need 500 precision kills and a certain number of SIVA particles. You can get the SIVA particles through five completions of heroic or three with additional puzzle. I will not be reviewing the puzzle in this video because again, it's very detailed. Honestly, while it's useful and you might get an additional ship and some other things, it's just as easy to do the five uh, heroics over a period of time because the three, when you're doing the puzzle, you also, while you're doing the puzzle, you could be losing additional time. So it's just, to me, it's not worth the effort. To get kills, just use the same as I used in my Izanagi farm video. Head down to the green room in the Whisper mission and you should be able to complete it in no time. And that's it. I made this video, as many of the videos I've seen were made early in release in this mission, and in some cases missed some points that might stump newer players. Again, as I've tried to Sherpa people through this and as I've tried to help people, there are areas that I saw in videos that weren't really covered that I thought could help, especially with you part-time guardians. As always, my videos, again, like I talked about earlier, are aimed at part-time guardians, so I don't assume you know certain things when I make them. Again, these are made for hardcore and casual uh, players. Again, that's why I put time steps so you can decide which portions you want to skip. However, hope you found this video useful. If you do, feel free to like it and subscribe to my channel. Get in the comments and let me know what you'd like to see next. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the tower.